So let's um, change directions a little bit because you're a pastor, right? Yeah. And your faith is um, really important to you. And so you also talked a bit about how you prayed and that helped you with realizing carnivore. So let's talk a little bit about that with your faith in carnivore and so forth. Yeah. Well, you know, when I go to the Bible and I, I see that, um, and I don't know how familiar you are, you know, with the story of Adam and Eve and that I believe they're, you know, first created beings other than the angels. Um, and, uh, of course the animals, they came before uh, Adam and his wife, but, but they were basically, um, I guess herbivores and they were able to eat from any tree in the garden, except for that one, which they disobeyed God and ate from eventually got, they got kicked out of the garden and, um, and over time, uh, God permitted people to eat meat. And but to the Jews, he he had some um, prohibitions. Of course, that was unclean animals and all of that. But when you flow into the New Testament, there are a couple passages to say, don't let anyone um, tell you what to eat. And it basically says that everything is good if received with Thanksgiving. God has opened it up now. And so it doesn't matter, you know, for those who are in Christ. The um, requirements of the law, which were for for the Hebrew or the Jew, they're not enforced upon um, the church. And so I can eat crabs and shrimp and, you know, I can eat animals that were considered clean and then even animals like swine that were considered unclean. So that's all open up to me. Um, the, the tension was a, a, about plants because God permitted um us to eat plants and and everything that god created was good and but and then when you hear people like dr chafee saying you know plants are trying to kill you you know <laughs> <laughs> then you like okay and so when you delve down into it and research it a little bit more you find out well yeah yeah today's plants are trying to kill you because they're genetically modified and as as a gardener i have to pick between heirloom plants and hybrid plants. I don't want anything hybrid. I don't want anything genetically modified. I want something that's heirloom. I want it maybe to purchase my seeds from the Amish who got it from their grandparents, who got it from their grandparents and on and on and on. So, and, um, and they didn't do any experimentation with them other than some natural grafting and all of that. So, um, but the day's plants and then, you have the seed oils, which aren't naturally derived from seeds, but they're refined over and over and over again. And then it's just a bunch of poison. I, and I agree with Dr. Chafee and others where a lot of the ve vegetables and, and the fruits are, are poisonous. And I think years ago, people didn't have a lot of those things at their disposal. So I remember growing up as a kid, that we didn't have a lot of fruit. We may have had some apples and uh, some oranges, but we didn't, and maybe some bananas, but they were like, if mama brought some bananas or apples or something into the house, we were like, it was like Christmas. And sometimes literally it was, and we would get fruit in our stockings because we didn't, we couldn't, they weren't as uh, available to us. And maybe we were impoverished or something, but, um, but now it's like, you can just, get fruits and vegetables and you can pile and you're encouraged to pile them on your plate. You know, I used to get a big bowl and put literally a big bowl. It might've been like 10 inches across or something, fill it up with all kinds of salad leaves and, and all of that. And, and thinking that I'm eating healthy. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't think the diet of today or what's available in, in, on the grocery sh shelves today is the same kind of food that was available 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 years ago. It's just different. And, uh, and I think that's what's hurting people. And then, of course, all of the um, sugars and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just in everything. And, and people weren't eating five and 10 pounds of, of sugar a year or more. 
I don't know what the number is now, but we weren't eat, eating that much sugar. And um, and all the, the, the drinks. I mean, if we had orange juice, it a lot of times it was fresh squeezed until they started having that that the can that you had to reconstitute it and and all of that stuff. And so um it's not all fruit juices are mostly, you know, just just sugar. Sugar. That's that's all it is. And they and they're saying that they're they're calling them fruit juices. So um yeah, it's not the plate uh today isn't the, the plate that I grew up in with in front of me as as a kid. And um yeah so the the carnivore diet I think it brings me closer to the scriptural diet. Um, and I, I think that um, the foods that people ate uh, back in Bible days, whether it be 2,000 years ago or New Testament times, first century time or 3,500 years ago or, or you know, 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, it's, I think it was mostly meat. And if they were able to get some vegetables or fruit, they they were blessed and um but i think it was mostly meat and um yeah so i think i'm what i'm eating now is a lot closer to a biblical diet than um than i've ever eaten